Dear Mr. President, now is the time for action, but we're not going to wait until the next new town. My name is Brad A. My name is Charles M. Heiss, and I'm the sheriff, sheriff of Lawrence County, Missouri. We can't have a totally armed society. We should restore the ban on military-style assault weapons and a 10-round limit for magazines. There is a genuine desire on the part of your administration to restrict the Second Amendment, Amendment rights, rights of law-abiding American citizens. In my judgment, the proposed assault weapons ban is a singularly ineffective piece of legislation. Banning guns based on their appearance does not make sense. The 1994 assault weapon ban did not stop Columbine. And if we ban these types of weapons, you are putting women at a great disadvantage. AR-15 weapons are their weapon of choice. Law-abiding gun owners will not accept blame for the acts of violent or deranged criminals. Prosecuting criminals who misuse firearms works. Those prosecutions have declined, unfortunately, substantially under President Obama's presidency. The Second Amendment to the United States Constitution. The Second Amendment guarantees each of us the right to keep and bear arms. Unfortunately, in Washington, the reaction to this tragedy in Newtown is to rush to reenact a law that, according to the Janet Reno Department of Justice under President Clinton, did absolutely nothing to reduce gun violence. It is my sworn duty, duty to protect, protect and defend, defend the Constitution of the United States of America. It had not saved lives. It had not reduced the number of bullets that were fired in crimes. It had been a failure. Any attempt to restrict the Second Amendment rights and to mount an all-out assault, assault on the United, United States, States Constitution. Constitution. When I see not only the president, but people in Congress so willing to tamper with our Constitution and take a position that the Constitution was written more than 200 years ago and no longer is applicable to American society, to me, nothing can be further from the truth. And that was the reason for the letter. I wanted to know that we stood for the Constitution and our Second Amendment, and if there is an executive order or a law passed stating that these weapons are banned, my deputies will not be enforcing that which, by the way, I hate that word. I, I, I hate that they're called assault weapons. Tell me what it is about a pistol grip on a shotgun or a rifle that makes that rifle any more deadly than it would be if that pistol grip wasn't there. And that, to be honest with you, is probably one of the more aggravating things for me. If you have a ban on the 10-round magazines, the only thing it's going to do is keep someone like myself from going to the local gun store and buying them. I won't support the ban on magazines. If I'm going to protect my family from an intruder, then do I want the federal government telling me I only have X number of rounds to do that? What if I have to protect myself from multiple intruders? The criminals we deal with every day could care less about any of the laws. Do you really think they're going to go in and register their guns or follow a background check? Oh yeah, absolutely. We arrest the same offenders over and over and over again. The purpose is to dry up the supply of these weapons over time. The only people that's going to affect is the everyday, honest, tax-paying American citizens. And the criminals still going to buy them off the street, on a street corner, in a dark alley. Law enforcement is not demanding that we do this. Law enforcement is demanding that you already have existing laws. Enforce those laws. Let's arrest and prosecute them. Let's get the stiffer penalties. The eye for the eye. If they murder somebody, then put them to death. I don't think there's this fourth and fifth chance and then come back and make a law so that my father can't own a gun that because some criminal killed somebody, he now cannot use that weapon. When you look at one of the common denominators that we have in these mass shootings, mental health. The mental health apparatus in this country is absolutely broken. Our county jails have become absolute dumping grounds for the mentally ill. We are not equipped, we are not trained, we are not skilled in dealing with the mentally ill. And so there's so much more to this than just gun control. It's absolutely ridiculous and insane that they want to take away guns when guns aren't what the problem is. And they keep chipping away piece by piece. It's a practice in futility. Chicago is a great example. Some of the most restrictive gun laws in the land exist in Chicago, and yet they have one of the highest murder rates in the nation. And we still want to hang our hat on the fact that we can legislate crime out of our community. It does not work. The Second Amendment guarantees each of us the right to keep and bear arms to protect ourselves. I have 869 square miles of jurisdiction. I cover that with 16 deputies. Oftentimes when we arrive, it's after the fact. And the fact that we expect our citizens to pick the phone up and dial 911 and wait for us to respond, that's not a good practice. We can't be there. They've got to have the right to defend themselves in their homes. And that's what it comes down to.
For now, decisions are upon us, and we cannot mistake absolutism for principle. <sighs> Too much power to the king. He took literally the same oath that uh, any sheriff in the United States would take to defend the Constitution. It makes you stop and seriously think uh, maybe he doesn't value the Constitution the way that we value it. To me, that's dangerous. That Constitution, our Constitution, is our founding document. It's the very foundation of our nation, of our free society. I still have faith in the American citizens that, that we're not going to let something like this happen. And I've known many people, especially in the military, that have died for our freedoms and to protect that Constitution. And I'm certainly not going to let them down by letting our Constitution be defiled.